Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Fit for Piano Repertoire Workouts with Ray. In this series, we want to provide teachers and students solutions to tricky technical problems in popular exam repertoire. We use exercises from our book Fit for Piano and show how easily these exercises can be applied to those tricky technical bits and make the practice and playing easier, more fun and more musical. One thing Ray always say that I love is when the technique is coordinated, then the music can flow. So today we will start with a piece from the ABRSM grade 6 syllabus called Sofigieto by CPE Bach. This piece is so much fun to play, in fact I love playing it myself. It really shows off many areas of our technique and I have never ever met a single student who doesn't like the sound of it. There are a lot of challenges in this little piece, so we will just pick the most common ones to discuss today and show how quickly with the right technique we can make the biggest difference. First of all Ray, uh, how can we achieve even and smooth transition in the opening few bars? Well here I think the clue is to do lots of rhythm practice. When you're doing rhythm practice it's best to take a small number of bars and practice them in different rhythms. So the rhythms that I would find the most useful for this passage would be the two longs and two shorts. So I like to use the words purple sneakers, purple sneakers or pink shoelaces. So here's purple sneakers. <laughs> pink shoelaces and that really helps to engage the fingers so that they can play evenly but of course once we've got that even tone quality you then want shape and so in order to achieve the shape we need to use the wrist to move up and down in a wavy kind of movement so we need to be clear what it has to do um, first of all I would start with an upward movement So to make it easier, we can take the first five notes, go up here, and do that quite a few times. And then put it all together. Now when we come uh, another few bars on, we've got this passage where the left hand has broken chords. The important thing here is not to keep a set hand position. That will become very, very uncomfortable and it will be really hard to play evenly. Instead of that, you need to keep the hand closing. And then we can add those wavy-like movements. And that really will help it. Thanks, Ray. Uh, one of the problems I find in my own teaching is that once we've added all these lovely wavy movements and the wrist is going nice and freely and we reduce the tension, what happens is the sound the fingers make are no longer articulated and the whole piece can sound really like slushy and wobbly. So what's happening here? Yes, Melody, I think this is what you mean when it comes back like this. <laughs> with no articulation. So in our book Fit for Piano we have a, an exercise called windmills and in that we learn to engage the fingers with the key while keeping the wrist moving so that the weight from the arm goes through into the key and the wrist at the same time can move around like that and that's the movement we need here. Um, another point that's really useful to talk about um, here is this bar that goes like this. Now, one of the problems here is that people don't really like doing a movement with the thumb that goes up. And that's what we need to do in order to keep that wavy movement going. This will be a down, this will be an up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So in order to practice that, I'd make an exercise out of it. I'd take the two note slur exercise from Fit for Piano, and instead of doing the long fingers, I'd practice a, a third apart using, say, fingers three and one. And that will help this bar to be better coordinated. And then once you add that, it's really like the, the octopus exercise that Melody talked about in one of our previous sessions. So it seemed to me that we need 
our fingers, our wrists and our arms to be all working together so um, the whole thing sort of comes together and sounds good. If we're missing any one of those components, it doesn't work. You're absolutely right, Melody, for that. So now, looking ahead to bars uh, 14 and 17, this is when the left hand goes over the right hand, across the body, onto those black keys. When students, stu students play this, often what happens is they have a big gap going from the previous bar, and then they slow down, and there's a lot of tension going on. So here we need to be clear about what part of the key we're using. So the left hand will need to play really near to the full, and the thumb will need to play pretty much on its tip so that it's out of the way of the right hand which has to go like this underneath. Now some students will find that really hard to start with so let's make it easier. Take the left hand down an octave and practice it down here to get that coordination and then when you put it back in the right place on the keyboard it will become much easier. Those are some really great tips, Ray. I think that'll make the playing of this piece a lot easier and more enjoyable. So now we will skip to Venice and uh, we'll talk about the piece Gondolier's Refrain by Bergmüller from Opus 109. When students first start learning this piece, most of them are actually captivated by the tuneful right hand line and they often memorize it much quicker and easier than the left hand part. However, in my opinion, the left hand is in a way more important. If we think of the right hand um, representing the singing of the gondolier, then the left hand is like the gen gentle rocking of the boat. And most students would, would either play the left hand with the notes over articulated and too heavy, in which case I kind of tease them and say, oh, perhaps they're in really rough and turbulent waters. Or sometimes they play and end up producing no sound at all. So what's going on here? So for this left hand, this is really a study in a left hand accompaniment, I think. We need a very smooth movement of the wrist, hand and arm. So first of all, if we take the first couple of bars, I would move across, across from the bass A to the E with a kind of smile movement. It's like we don't want any jerky movement or landing on that E. It wants to be part of the whole. And you'll notice that my hand moves around in an elliptical movement, and that helps to make the music flow. A little bit further down, we have another part where the, there is a melody at the base of the left hand. So in order to bring that bass out and keep the rest of the accompaniment from sounding too heavy or too loud, we need to keep that circular movement going. And I think that's the clue for the whole left hand accompaniment. Yeah, that elliptical shape is almost like the gondolier rowing the boat, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, another really challenging bit um, is the arpeggios with the mordants later on in the piece. I think students always get stuck here. Do you have any tips for us? Well, in our book we have a big chapter on arpeggios and I think the movement we need here is what I've called under the bridge. Now, if you think of a boat going under a bridge, it doesn't make any sudden movement. It just glides very, very slowly and evenly as it as it goes um, beneath the bridge. And it's exactly the same here. We want a very smooth movement in order to get across. And I think what students will do um, that, that is not helpful is that they'll try and keep a hand position here and then there'll be a sudden movement to get to the rest of the arpeggio. So we need to keep the hand closing as it travels. So there's nothing sudden. Then we come to the mordant. Now, that's a completely different movement. The most helpful fingering here will be two, four, three, and it's a little bit of a rotation. So we have to combine those two movements together. So the simplest way to do it is to stop. Stop there and then play that. And then when we're good at it, we can take the stop out. And that should actually solve the problem.
Yeah, and I find that stop actually helps to solve any sort of tension that one might have accumulated throughout the arpeggio. Um, so then the hand is nice and free to play the mordant. That's right, yes. It's a beautiful piece and I'm sure the students enjoy it a lot. And that's the end of our episode today. Thank you so much for joining us and we would love to hear from you. So do tell us by leaving us a comment down below if you want to say anything or even if you wanted to give us suggestions on pieces you would like us to cover in the future. And so to help us produce more of these free videos, please remember to like, comment and subscribe and help us spread the word on what we do by sharing our video with any students or colleagues. Thanks again and we will see you next time. Thank you.